You've reached Monster 911, and I'm Lance Hightower. I've been taking cryptid emergency calls for over five years. If you have a cryptid emergency, please call our toll-free number, 866-306-8085. I can help you. What's your emergency? Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Monster 911, one of YouTube's most terrifyingly true creature encounter podcast channels. For those of you who have been witness to the unexplainable, the impossible, the horrifying, a true living and breathing creature that is alive and well in the U.S., and if you've been witness to something that has still plagued your mind to this very day, something that can only be described as truly a monster, call me. I can lend a verbal hand of assistance in helping you cope with what you saw and possibly why you saw it. Call our toll-free Creature Report hotline at one 866 306-8085, you can call 24-7, and generally I will answer within 24 hours or less. You'll be glad you did call me. I'd like to say please keep your awesome comments coming, guys. Also, your comments keep this channel alive and well, and you also provide valuable information on what you want to see and hear from this channel, so please continue to keep the comments coming. Uh, be sure to also visit our social media sites for more content while you work or on the road. All of the links are going to be listed below. We'd love to hear from you which sites are your favorites and what you want to hear on them. Um, so we can see that the more that you visit the social media links, we can put more content and more content on. And be sure and visit our website, brand new. It's at www.monster911.com. And if you'd like to uh, have us add something to the website or social media site, just let us know again in the comments. I'm all ears. As I mentioned in some of the past intros, I'm still asking if you would like to hear a brief intro of missing person cases from the David Politis series. It would be prior to hearing my show. Just leave me a comment below and let me know on that, guys. Now, let's get to this next show. In this episode, I read some of our website subscriber mail and answer some burning questions, as well as I give some of my personal opinions regarding why you should always carry a sidearm when out in the woods and more. Hey guys, this is Lance here with Cryptid Brothers Investigations of Oklahoma. I just wanted to give you something different, a video, and I'm here on my property. Uh, if you hear some background noise, I got my neighbor uh, I have one neighbor to the west. She's cutting some grass. I'm in the back side of my property. Uh, my son and I were getting ready for a wood pile for deer season here. So this is just a foundation that was on my property and we started cutting some wood. My neighbor has some trees she wanted down and so we just started stacking it here a couple weeks ago. Uh, I still need to pile it up here and in the front. And uh, what you're not seeing back over here is there's some more foundations. Uh, if you hear pounding back here, my son, he's building a dog kennel for our dogs when we're not here at the house and we're working. So, but I wanted to give you something different, something to um, um, take away besides just audio here. What I thought about doing is many of you, um, <laughs> so if you don't mind, he'll be pounding through this. Um, Many of you have contacted through our website, uh, cryptidbrothersinvestigations.com. Uh, and so on our website, there's a place where you can submit some stories. So I had a collection, and this is not all of them, so my apologies. But uh, I'd like to say I'm on there all the time, but right now I'm kind of a one-man show. So I went through there and I thought, you know, this would be interesting. Some questions that people have. I'll just be using first names because... I didn't get authorization for to read some of this, but since it was on the website, I'm sure many of the people won't mind. But some are questions, some are statements, some are not stories, and so I thought I'd just go through for you guys and do a different show, and every once in a while people have questions. So I'll just read through. I've got my coffee. I am a coffee drinker. And so... Um, I kind of drink coffee in the evening. I know you're not supposed to, but um, in the evenings when I get stuff done, when I write, when I do interviews, and sometimes I'm up till late. So uh, if you don't mind here, I'll just get a sip. So let's go ahead with some uh, questions here. Um, 
This is from Dylan. Dylan says, uh, hello guys, still alive? Laugh out loud. Hey, I recently watched all of your YouTube videos and I'm just wondering if something happened. I've not seen any new content for over two months and I've been looking forward to seeing your new live broadcast with thermal and infrared camera. Hopefully everything is still on track. I hope to hear from uh, you guys with some good news. Thanks for your time, Dylan. And so it looks like this was some time back. So yeah, we haven't really, I haven't placed a lot of YouTube uh, video on uh, just for a number of reasons. Um, the, the patron site for you guys, it does take some time. And you guys, when I started the channel, you know, it's hard to believe that we started this channel of Dogman Sasquatch Oklahoma Encounters back January 2017. And it's, it's amazing how we're coming up almost in four years. Time flies. So what I wanted to do is one of the reasons why we went from YouTube into the patron site is it, it's just not about money. It does help because we were relying on the monetization, the revenue, to help us for gas, investigation equipment. We knew we wanted to write books. We knew we wanted to, people were wanting some stickers. So stickers and shirts and things weren't our, our idea first. It was a lot of the followers that said, hey, we want something of you guys. So a lot of the subscribers uh, were the first to say, if you get this, we'll, we'll buy it. So that's kind of how we got started. And for whatever reason, I still don't know to this day, I was having this conversation with my brother Lane. YouTube said we duplicated something and we never did find out. I never did make contact with the live person that tried and I tried. So they stopped basically with our AdSense revenue and it really meant a lot to us. It wasn't a lot, but it was enough to pay for fuel, um, to buy batteries for cameras, to buy a new camera, to upgrade some things. And it just, I mean, we were relying on that and it was growing really fast. Um, in a 28 day cycle, we had 6.4 million minutes of viewer time. And that is like crazy outlier, way outside the bounds of the parameters, what normal shows get. When they were getting two, maybe three minutes of engagement time, we were getting almost 33 minutes of engagement time. It was unheard of. So we knew we were hitting on the right buttons with people, our style, our delivery, how we interviewed, and we sincerely care about our eyewitnesses. We care about them a lot and we care about you guys a lot. So, you know, one thing led to another and then when we got demonetized, I said, we got to continue with something. And so that's when we came up with our patron site. And so the patron site is a way for us to do even more uh, besides with YouTube. Um, you're allowed a lot more freedom outside of YouTube. I know a lot of people use it. It's the second biggest search engine, but there's still a lot more things you can do outside of YouTube. That's why we're on Vimeo. So kind of a long story there, but that was one of the reasons why I don't put a lot of shows on YouTube. I will put some shows on YouTube. I know there's a lot of people upset because they were, they were engaged with us, but now our shows, you know, if you're not monetized, they don't push your show. It's not in the browser. A software system so uh, you know the patrons come first in my opinion and if the YouTube subscribers don't subscribe and become a member they don't know that they don't know we have more shows now on our patron site than we do the YouTube site so um, our patrons will come first our YouTube subscribers will come second and that's why I haven't put uh, more time into it I will I will put some shows on for YouTube but our patrons come first and that's, you know, in my opinion, uh, because they're supporting us and they believe in us and they like our style. So anyway, long story on that. Sorry about that, Dylan. Uh, this is from Amy. Looking how to start cryptozoology and tracking creatures. I have a background in studying mythological creatures and I am a SAR tech with a tracking background. Would love some advice, Amy. Um, well, a couple things here, Amy. Um, cryptozoology is the study of cre creatures that are 
in many ways not supposed to exist, but people say they exist and that there's no evidence or proof that they're using the scientific methods uh, in biology or chemistry and uh, physical evidence such as prints that, that these creatures exist. Um, I understand what cryptozoology is. We have crypto in our name, cryptid brothers, uh, as a prefix to give the connotation or the representation that's what we're about. But in many ways, I don't like the term cryptozoology because it implies it's a mythical creature, just what you said. You have a setting background of mythological creatures. Um, the thing of it is, is that Bigfoot and these dogman creatures, they're not mythological. They may be myth or lore in the sense there's been a lot of stories and cultures for years and years, but the fact is they are real as you and me. Uh, a lot of people, uh, including family members, will say, well, if they're real, how come we haven't seen on television? How come they're not out? How come every network is not publicizing this? And the thing of it is, is that there's a lot more at stake besides just talking about something. Uh, there is a lot of actual and factual pictures that are out there, even on YouTube, but there's so much... Uh, fake news, if you will, uh, that's out there. It's hard to determine what's real and what isn't. And in our opinion, my brothers and I opinion, the Cryptid Brothers, is that if something is very real and it is the real deal, it is going to be very difficult to actually get on anything without being taken off. There's powers that be behind the scenes, and we've talked about this many times, with these people we call collectively the MIBs, the agent, the government agents, that I can tell you they will take it down. Now, I can't say with 100% certainty that is, that will be so, but I can say with good certainty it will. So there's a lot of pictures and videos and evidence and people that have seen close up that's had attacks that has proof but it never they're they're either threatened or scared out of their mind by these agents to not breathe a word um, they all their evidence is collected by these agents any pictures any video game camera footage um, uh, fractured doors uh, any evidence that places this creature uh, at a site where this encounter happened, it's gone. Um, it, and it's just not a couple dozen of these agents working. I'm, I'm going to tell you, I don't know the number, but I'm probably not far off if I said thousands of these agents are employed, in addition to civilians uh, that are under uh, very high secret type of contracts. Uh, they might have a special skill set or um, that someone as an agent may not have, such as tracking, uh, knowing the bush, how to navigate through, uh, I gotta trim this up, but navigate through this and be able to look at signs, trees, wear patterns, brake patterns, broad, you're looking at blades of grass, knowing just every little nuance. There's people that specialize in that. And we've gotten really good at this because it's one thing not to know and it's another thing to know when you know something might be present in an area versus someone that doesn't you're now your mind is looking to other things you don't want to immediately jump to things but now you're more open to your to, in looking up at trees you're looking higher at a six seven eight nine ten foot level versus just looking on the ground where typical indigenous animals are at right so i would say um Listen to a lot of these shows. They will help. Listen to a lot of these podcast shows and channels on uh, Become a Member. That's another thing. Become a member to a podcast show. Listen to these encounters. That's one way to get really astute at this information, at this subject matter. I wouldn't study too much of mythological creatures, even though that's your background. You need to study things that or physically happening. Listen to what a credible person is saying, what happened, what the weather patterns were like, uh, what the circumstance, the context of the encounter was about. Then you'll learn. Um, otherwise, you know, the mythological creatures, there's, there's some, uh, you know, we would say there's a little truth in lore, but I would say study these shows, and that's going to be about the best way. And study books that are reputable, 
Um, there's a lot of books. There's there's some books that are written that are fictional, non-fictional. So in other words, the non-fiction part is about the creature, but it's in a setting of a town that may exist, and the creature is real in the story as far as its presence. We know it's real, but it's in a setting where if it was in this setting, this is what it might have done. Or the story, uh, there's a town that's real, but the characters in the story are fictional. Uh, so it's kind of a fiction, nonfiction. So I would look at books. Uh, we're coming out with one this year. I'm hopefully to get it done. Um, it's helping eyewitnesses, learning uh, how eyewitnesses can evaluate, discern, and come to grips with what they saw. So it is all nonfiction. And so that's one to pay attention to. Uh, as far as tracking, um, get with some people. There's some, there's some good videos on how to track animals. Start with the basics. How do you track a rabbit? How do you track a deer? Uh, how do you track a human? You know, there's some good videos out there, believe it or not, uh, even that the military. So in studying those, that'll get you some basics. Um, but maybe we might have some videos later for uh, you, Amy, that you might be able to. We've got a lot of ideas coming, and so uh, just pay attention. I can't promise we'll come up with a tracking video, but we might um, sometime in the future. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Tim. He said, hello, please provide me with a physical address as I feel most comfortable addressing you via snail mail. Uh, the encounters my son and I had are mild in comparison to the ones you have had on your show, but are noteworthy nonetheless. Thank you for your time in advance. Uh, well, thanks, Dr. Tam. Appreciate it. Um, some of the... Uh, I, we never want people to judge their encounter. I know when you hear these stories, people will say, Lance, I wanted to talk to you and tell you my encounter, but it wasn't juicy enough or it wasn't as terrifying enough. People... We don't judge an in every encounter. If it happened to you, if it happened to you, it was important. It was important. Um, don't judge an encounter based on your encounter. If it terrified you, if it was your first time of seeing one of these creatures, it was important. It was personal. And we want to know about it. So we don't prejudge something. I don't go through my list going, oh, that's not scary enough. Uh, that's we we don't do that. We don't do that. Uh, we value every encounter story with respect. So if it happened, we always tell people that's listening to our shows. You have to remember, this happened to a human being that has feelings, that have emotions, that have fear, that have fright, um, and and it creates these reactions such as PTSD, anxiety, stress that can affect their entire life. And every person is different. So, um, yeah, just get in contact us with, with us, Dr. Tim. And we'd love to. I think I sent my snail mail. I think I sent my address. We just moved. So, um, and if any of you guys want to contact me versus snail mail, you can. Uh, I don't mind. You know, some people are computer savvy and some aren't. And that's okay. So, if you want to contact me on a personal letter or a note, you can contact me, uh, Lance Hightower, Post Office Box, 266 Terrellton, Oklahoma. That's T E R L T O N, Oklahoma. My son's still banging. Uh, 74081. 74081. Uh, and that's Terrellton, Oklahoma. 74081. I need to take a drink here. I'm talking too much. And no, there's nothing in my coffee. It's just coffee. <clears throat> Okay, the mosquitoes are coming out. Okay, this is by Daniel. Uh, he says, I was lost in the mountains of West Virginia. I didn't know this was signs. I didn't know this was signs of a Sasquatch, but I did experience rocks thrown at me, knocks and howls. I would just like to talk with someone and see what they think about what happened. Okay, you can, Daniel. Um... And its subject was possible Bigfoot encounter. Well, everything that you talked about here, <clears throat> rocks thrown at you, uh, knocks and howls. I mean, all those are can be definitely kind of classic things that are characteristics that a Bigfoot and a dog man and other types of creatures too. You know, we we focus and <clears throat> excuse me hone in on the Bigfoot and dog man, but. 
we want people to know too, there's things out there we don't have a name for. Um, my sister-in-law, we had this conversation and last time I was with her and she grew up outside of where we grew up out in uh, Western Oklahoma and her family had some property and she remembers playing with some of her friends out in a field of the property bound and she looked to the tree line they were in an open area and she looked at the tree line and standing next to a tree she said clear as day she called it it had the head of a ram it had horns that circled and it was standing there looking at her they didn't own any rams or goats or anything like that this was a huge creature that walked on two legs it had a head like a ram so she called it ram man and she just noticed it was looking at her and she was kind of frightened but she was like oh that's interesting you know how kids sometimes uh, you know an adult freaks out whereas kids sometimes go oh they want to be my friend you know so she really didn't freak out too much but she remembers that and I'm just I've never heard of that you know so there's a lot out there but the howls the knocks the throws you know I always put logic to things if you're out in the middle of nowhere is it possible someone could be there as well Yes, there's people who venture by themselves, there's people that go out on hikes, but for the most part, other humans, for the most part, other humans are not going to throw rocks, are not going to try to frighten you and or knock on, they'll, they'll induce themselves, hey, hello friend, how you doing, I'm on my way here, you know, and this gets into some things why you want to carry a sidearm or some means of protection. You just don't want to go blatantly by yourself and have a camera and just turn it on your hat and just go walking through the woods. You need to be aware of your surroundings. So what I did, one of the first things, like moving to my property, is I wanted to, I walked all of it. Now it's thick, right? So I put a lot of tick thing, I taped up my boots and everything, and I just went out, I started early in the morning, and I walked the whole property. I wanted to get to know the lay of the land. And any investigative property that, you, any property you want to investigate, First of all, you want to make sure you have permission. You want to make sure you know the boundaries because some places you don't want to get shot. And around here, I'm telling you, there's people that are very protective of their property. You better know where the boundaries are. Um, so you, it's good to know the lay of the land. You can get a uh, what we call a topo map or a topography map that gives the lay of the land. And then you can get on there with a marker and draw out the boundary or put it in front of a landowner. Where's your boundary, sir or ma'am? and you get permission that way so you know where you're at you always take a compass so you'll know where you're at and there won't be any uh, misunderstanding boundaries but you want to get to know the lay of the land and uh, but you always want to take I kind of deviated off here but you want to get to know who has permission to be on properties and if you're out in a public site that's different but most of the time when you're packing heat it's for a human it's not because of a Bigfoot or anything like that. Uh, not to say that you want to, you know, come up against an aggressive creature, but I'm just saying that it's for humans. There's a lot of humans that are up to no good, and you guys know that. Obviously, you watch the news, and I can't stand to watch the news anymore because there's nothing good. But um, I'll just say that uh, you want to use some discernment. You want to practice with your firearm. Uh, not every person is a bad person, obviously. So people that carry a firearm, you need to have a, a level of discernment. And that means you need to practice. You need to put yourself in circumstances. What would I do here if this happened? What would I do here if this happened? Um, you know, so when you walk up on somebody, uh, obviously you want to show no aggression. Um, you want to keep things pleasant. And uh, you just want to use your better judgment. You know, what kind of vibe are you getting? I mean non-body clues just tonality of voice what do they look like you know what is if you just get a vibe that something's not right you just need to back away and get out of there that's all i'll say so just use that inner spirit that voice that tells you if something's not right just needs to back out of there so you're basically reading your environment and that's why you just want to pack some level of security for yourself here uh, but anyway getting back to daniel i kind of deviated here all those things can be a sign of it. Uh, you know, all you can do is say that there was an encounter that you didn't see anything. Um, you heard some howls, but it wasn't any type of a samurai chatter. But it can be. It's, it's hard to say at this point. But I would suggest taking a recorder next time 
and keep the recorder going like a GoPro like I have here. Um, this is Mark. I'm a truck driver of FedEx Ground. I live in Fort Worth, Texas. I drive my runs in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, and South Texas on a regular basis. Well, a long story short, I saw what I now know to be a dog man on the side of the freeway in Mississippi during a rainstorm. I also have seen a Bigfoot with my brother when I was younger in the state of northern Washington while on a family vacation. I was going to call to get in. I was going to call in to get my story out there, but I have been a little skittish to do so. I listen to your shows on YouTube as well as um, some other shows that are out there. I found all of your shows after I saw the dog man in Mississippi. I had to find out what it was, and I know now after doing my research and listening to your shows that it was definitely a dog man creature. So, um, yeah, Mark. I mean, sometimes my brother Lane and I and Lara, we talk a little bit, is it, in an odd way, is it a, a blessing to have seen? I know I, I hate to use the word blessing, but are you fortunate that you saw a creature that not many people will ever see? Uh, there's a lot of animals waking up. I've got dogs barking. i got mules way back here, way, way, way back there. Anyway. So, you know, is it fortunate or unfortunate that you see these creatures? I don't know, because this is something that not many people will see in their lifetime. So I'm going to say that it depends how the person views it, your personal, how you view it. If it's a terrifying encounter, then no, it wasn't. You were not fortunate. A lot of people will have a lot of um, bad memories bad nightmares from their encounter, especially if it happened as a child or even as an adult. Again, I'm, uh, PTSD is a very formal definition for it, post-traumatic stress disorder, and it's a lot of sleep disturbances, a lot of flashbacks, there's a lot of firing, neurologic firing of the uh, neural frontal cortex, a lot of the uh, uh, neurotransmitters are really firing like crazy, so they go through a lot of anxiety, a lot of cortisol release, so these people can't sleep very good. It disrupts their personal life, their job, their relationships. So, yeah, I mean, I would say looking at this, it does depend on the perspective of the person, but by and large, I'm going to lean more toward it's a bad thing, um, especially if it's a child that has a bad encounter, and some have. So, uh, they're all over too, uh, Mark. They're all over for sure. There's uh, Mississippi is a common place, but Oklahoma, Arkansas. I mean, we have so many dogman creature sightings here in Oklahoma. It's incredible. Uh, this last year, from now until a year back, uh, I've had more dogman encounters within city limits. Uh, very uh, just a short distance outside of city limits and I don't not only Tulsa but surrounding communities and that's where I'm kind of shocked uh, let's see here I'll get to that one here in a second uh, this is from Justin hi Lance Justin here I'm rather introverted and very private person so I'd appreciate if you just leave my name off the honor wall uh, honor Wall is just trying to honor those people that are supporting us uh, once I get a cabin built, and I'll talk about that later. And also such things uh, that you do to show gratitude for your supporters. I really enjoy your podcast, and I'm not just blowing smoke up your butt when I say that yours is by far the most top, most informative out there, especially for those of us who go out into the field and learn about them and experience them. By the way, I've heard you express curiosity regarding dogman relationship to the rainy weather. If you're interested, I can go into deeper with that with you as I've grown up with dogmen most of my life and have therefore fortunately been in a unique position to observe long term why that is. And you give your number and everything. So I might have to have a conversation with you then, uh, Justin. Uh, a couple things here. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, you know, right now, when we started our show in 2017, there was uh, some really, um, there were some shows that had been out a while. Um, everybody remembers Brent and Sawn. He, um, I miss him. I, I had a brief relationship with uh, 
Brenton. We we knew each other, and I respected him. Uh, it was his show, and that really kind of sparked us to get our show going. So I, I really respect that, and we had some conversations. Uh, I don't want to say we're close, but we knew each other. I'll put it that way. Um, so there was about uh, four or five shows that were out when we got started now. There's a ton of shows. Most of the shows I find, I don't get a lot of time to cruise or peruse the Internet there, if you will, or surf. Uh, but some of the ones that I've listened to, it's it's people retelling scary stories or they're narrating a story that's already been told and they're just retelling it. And, and that's fine. Totally fine. Each their own. Everybody has their own style. Everybody's trying to get subscribers and, you know, bump it up. And um, we, we've never really been about that. Uh, when we started the show, we actually did it for kind of therapy for us. We had hope that our style, you know, we're, we're older. We weren't a bunch of uh, spring chickens. Uh, we all had careers and family and we just, we grew up very rural. Uh, we didn't have a lot of money, uh, but, uh, we had good family lives and we just grew up in the country. We grew up hunting, fishing, trapping, camping, playing in the woods. That's just what we did. So we encountered a lot of animals. We knew animal sounds. It didn't bother us to get out and get dirty and get ticks and poison ivy. That's just kind of how we grew up. My brothers and I. So, um, when we got started, you know, it, it's just, uh, we felt very comfortable on talking to people and it resonating people, our, our interest, our compassion, our concern for them on what they saw, because we have seen, we have heard too. We've had odd things happen. We've been camping where it's just pitch black at deer camp and you have odd things happen. So, uh, and it resonated. People liked our style, and they still do, because we try to do. Um, I don't want to say none of us are journalists. I've never had a journalism class ever. But our career is what we do. We ask a lot of questions. I'm in healthcare. Brother Bill's in healthcare, and Lane, he's uh, he's been in the mechanics scene, but he's a foreman now at an oil and gas company. So we just kind of grew up questioning things, asking a lot of questions, reading people very well, and that's just kind of our gift. But a lot of people liked it, and it took off. So thank you so much. I appreciate the comments there. Um, as far as the weather, there is some type of relationship with weather. When weather gets uh, very windy during any type of a storm, and right now, as I speak, we have two, we have a tropical storm and a hurricane getting ready to impact the U.S., the southern, I think, Florida, Louisiana coast, Oklahoma, I think we're going to get some remnants. Uh, today is uh, Monday. We're going to get some remnants of it maybe by Wednesday. So um, you people be safe if you guys are in the southeast part of the U.S. But weather, rainstorms, snowstorms, windstorms, Hail storms, most any kind of storm like that, there tends to the activity of these creatures goes up. And uh, I might have to talk here to Justin, but our premise is that it's easier to navigate, it's easier to move around and not be seen. You can make a little bit more noise, and you can't hear the the small noise compared to the larger the trees moving and branches crashing and things like that. Uh, so. It's actually a smart way to navigate and move around. So, we and these creatures aren't dumb. I guess that's what I'm saying. They're not dumb. They're going to use their environment to their advantage uh, to the nth degree. Uh, this is David. Hey Lance, I got through listening to the latest two episodes in Patreon, which I'm a member of. I want to share a story my grand grandpa told me when he was working in the coal mines he was in London Kentucky doing some shopping and said some fox hunters had brought in a creature on a wagon he said he had the body of a man covered in hair and a muzzle with red glowing eyes I believe this was in the 30s uh, sounds pretty familiar huh what's really interesting is that this happened way before we heard of dog man I don't believe werewolves were too popular in movies back then I might be wrong, laugh out loud. Anyway, just wanted to share this with you. I had him tell the story many, many times over the years and enjoyed it every time. 
I had many other stories, being my family is all from Kentucky. Lots of strange things happening in those hills of eastern Kentucky. I was going to have him tell me all the stories on audio so that uh, he would have them for memories, but unfortunately he passed away at a nursing home about two months ago from COVID. I'm so sorry, David. Um, anyway, I don't ever plan not being a member. Maybe someday I might be able to get to meet you and the brothers, maybe even do a little outing. That would be awesome. But anyway, keep up the great work. Can't wait for the next episode. Be safe out there. Thanks, David. I appreciate that so much, buddy. I'm so sorry to hear about your grandpa, about COVID. COVID, I won't get into it here, but I've had a lot of seminars on that. Being in healthcare, we have to have relicensing seminars, and I had one about three weeks ago talking about COVID, and uh, maybe if you guys want, I can go into some of the things that I learned that most people won't, you won't find on the news. Um, so if, if that's of interest, just let me know, and I can post a little something on our patron board. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if, you know, David brings up a good point here. If any of your grandparents or neighbors or anybody that's getting of age has any interesting stories like that, go ahead and tape record them. Uh, do a GoPro camera, get an audio, if anything, and record it. Because there's a lot of these stories, folks, that I'll never... There's so many stories out there of creatures. I'm telling you right now. We don't have enough of me or anybody else to get them all done. We'll never hear them because they get in certain circles and people get really protective of a story if they feel that it might be embarrassing to themselves or other people or might put their job in jeopardy or anything like that. People are not going to let that story out. So these stay in certain circles. They get hidden and never get told again. So uh, that's sad but true. Uh, but very interesting story, and I believe these creatures have been around for a long time, uh, David. Um, I believe that there are cultures, especially the Native American culture, that we say, oh, that's just a legend or lore or a story to get kids to get back in, you know, inside, or mind them. And, and some of that may be true, but there's an old saying, we said this before, that somewhere between legend and lore, there's some truth, right? And I believe these creatures have been around a long time. And I know there's a big debate. Is it is it alien? Is it a government experiment gone wrong? I don't know. I'll just say that I feel these creatures have been around a long time. I feel that Bigfoot's been around a long time. Um, I believe they've been in certain circles. They've been known about by our government for a long time, decades. I don't think they have a handle on them. So that's just my two cents. Uh, but they're extremely intelligent. How they got intelligent, that intelligent, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe you and I will find these, those things out here in the next decade. Um, okay, someone wanting to mail me their encounter. Okay, we already talked about that. Um, this is Shane. Please Google man comes across Pennsylvania Thunderbird. I was the one on the quad. Love to speak with somebody. Okay, I'll, I'll call you. Um, I was, um, I had a privilege to go to Alaska and I did a segment on Thunderbirds and I admit I didn't know that much about it, so I really had to dig. I was given a lot of information to kind of read one night. Uh, I was up till like two in the morning reading on Thunderbirds, something called the Kushtaka. It's the Eastern indigenous people of Alaska. And so, uh, the Thunderbirds is something that you've seen a lot of totem poles up in Alaska and it's a bird. Uh, this bird represents this spiritual power. Um, this uh, this larger-than-life bird. A lot of people that hear of this think it's a pterodactyl. Other people believe it's more of a spirit in nature. Other people believe it's physical, but it's just a massive bird with a wingspan of you know 15, 20 feet. I've never seen one, but there's enough of these thunderbirds uh, carved into enough of these totem poles that don't know. You know, I believe Alaska, the last great frontier, there's so much over there. <laughs> it's so vast. You know, just in flying over there in Alaska, even in a bush plane, it, I can't even put into words how massive the landscape is. I can see why there's just thousands upon thousands of people get lost in this, this uh, Alaska Triangle. Uh, since 1984, I think about 16,000 people have gone missing. Uh, which runs, um, let's see if I remember, I think it runs from Juneau to Barrel 
down to Anchorage and back to Juneau. This it's kind of a isosceles like triangle, and it's 200,000 square miles, and over 16,000 people have come up missing since then, locals and non-locals. A lot of it's probably weather related, but a lot of it we don't know. We don't know. Okay, it's getting late here, but I'm going to finish out. Uh. Uh, let's see. Hey Lance, about a month ago I sent you and your organization an email detailing a sighting. I'd come, uh, while traveling to Rosecommon County, Michigan, I was wondering if you'd received it, had a chance to read it. I was curious if you ever have had a similar sighting, if you had an opportunity to form an opinion. Um, I have not, I haven't, Gene. I'll take a look at that. There's a lot of things that happened in Michigan. Some of the dogman encounter stories, the previous one was a truck driver that had a dogman chase uh, running next to him that he shot and killed. Um, and I think I did a narration of that story. And so that, that's one that just comes to mind in Michigan. Um, this is from Charles. He says, I'm very interested in the subject of Bigfoot. I know it's not, in, it's not possible, but I would love to go on an interview or go looking for one sometime. I'm 64 years old. I did not know there was anyone around Tulsa Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, that was into investigating Bigfoot sightings and interviews. Well, thank you, Charles. We appreciate that. Uh, we'll, we'll consider that. I know we've been asked a lot of times. That's a train, so it gets loud. It's, it's, about, it's about a quarter mile that way. It runs all the time. That was one of the reasons why we liked the property is the train runs through here all the time and it's kind of nostalgic kind of americana to us so we loved it and that's probably why the property was on the, on the listing for six months but we love it we don't care it's just kind of americana to us is the train uh there we go so charles i'll just talk a little louder um yeah, we haven't got anything formal yet where we're going to go out with uh, have people go with us, but we want to get to that point. Uh, we want to make it safe for everybody. Uh, we want to make it fun. We want to make it informative. We want you to feel you got something. So uh, we're working on some things this year, which will be 2021. I say this year. We're working on something this year, 2020, to get something going on 2021. But we want to make it fun. We, we want to make it... Uh, uh, we really don't want someone to come away with going, that was boring. So we really want to make it fun for the kids. We want to make it fun for someone 64. And we don't want to assume anything. Uh, we want to make people feel comfortable. So whether you're just starting out or whether you're uh, an expert, uh, maybe we'll have the experts you know, work with us and take groups out themselves uh, and kind of work together. But we want to give people, uh, we want to make people feel comfortable in getting started when you're, how do you print, how do you uh, attain a cast? How do you mold one? Uh, how do you document it? What are you looking for? Uh, how do you discern it from an animal or a deer going through? So we're going to go through some things. I've got some ideas I want to get going for 2021, but I appreciate it. And, and as we do, I'll, I'll definitely inform you, Charles. And uh, so just kind of keep... Uh, in the loop of things uh, with us uh, on our show. Uh, <clears throat> this is from Zachary. I stumbled across your YouTube channel and started listening. I might have heard you guys from Sasquatch Chronicles, maybe. I have gone on two expeditions with the BFRO and the second one kind of trashed my opinion of the group, especially since they made a sign waiver saying we wouldn't bring a gun which I understand having a bunch of people who might not want to be armed, but they should have people who were armed to act as security. I was hoping to find someone like-minded people to go out with again. I'm not against traveling to meet up with a group. I don't know if your group allows people to tag along or not. Uh, maybe you know of a Second Amendment friendly group. Um, well, it's getting dark here, but I'll keep talking. Um, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, <laughs> I've got cows and everything, everything's waking up. Um, we carry, we carry all the time. Um, it's smart to carry in our opinion because there's a number of things out there. Number one, you've got people up to no good. I'm not saying you're going to shoot someone. 
I'm just saying you're going to use discernment, like I said earlier, right? You're going to use your intuition. You're going to use that. You're going to see what the situation holds. It's rare. It's rare you need anything like that. Most people aren't going to have, you're not going to have an issue. The, the thing why you want to carry is that you've got uh, rogue animals. You've got wild hogs. And if you run into a sow with a bunch of piglets, she's not going to like you. And she may charge you. Uh, if you can get out of the way or evade from her, then do it. Uh, if you don't have a choice and you feel backed into a corner fast, then you might have to pull your firearm. Um, you might run into a pack of wild dogs. It was three weeks ago, about two and a half miles northeast, we had a UPS driver here in Tarleton. The UPS driver... He was taking over for a route of one of the other drivers. He went into a home to deliver a package, and he was attacked by five dogs, um, a pack of wild dogs. And the story is, is they drug him out of the UPS truck. He lost his ear. He was hospitalized. He required multiple stitches. So it was, it was terrible, terrible to hear. It made the news. So when I'm out here, I get my firearm over there on my, uh, I've got my lawnmower out here. Had to haul some stuff here, but um, you never leave. I never go anywhere on the property without a firearm. Bottom line, and neither should you. And some of you, that may not be your thing to do. And so, if you want to carry a staff, something that you could, you know, poke back. But you want something to protect yourself, folks. You know, if you if you have bad legs, bad knees, you can't run. Definitely get some type of a uh, uh, something to carry. Now, when we're going out investigating, I conceal it. I don't, I've got my 500 here. I don't always carry it, but I carry it here. And then I have a shirt that's over that because these creatures can see what you're carrying. They're not stupid. They can see things in your hand. And if you want to investigate, I would suggest don't having anything in your hands. Uh, not even a staff or a camera. Have the camera going on the chest, the shoulder, or a hat. Don't hold it in your hand. They don't know what that is. Again, they're not that smart to know, oh, that's a Minolta... X100 camera. They don't know that. They don't know it's a camera. They just see you're holding something that looks like a firearm. So they're, they're going to stay away from you. Um, but keep your hands open. That's all I'm saying. Keep your hands open. Uh, have cameras going front and back. Have audio going too. The more recording devices you have while you're going through and you want to walk and stop. Walk and stop. Walk and stop. You just don't want to walk, 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 brush, brush, brush. And the other thing I would suggest, too, is um, you don't want to wear camo. You, you're, not, uh, you're not in a hunting expedition. You are an investigative expedition. And I wouldn't broadcast to people where you're going and what you're going to do. Uh, I know some people do. Uh, there's some podcasters out there that do that. I would not do that I, because there's other people that are listening that, <laughs> let's just say, Bottom line, it's not smart to do that. Um, just go to an area, do it, and then if you find anything, then you can report back and then, you know, have some discernment. Do you really want to report exactly to who are you going to report to and your exact findings? So be careful on those things. Um, but that's up to you. Skeeters are getting bad now. So um, I just wanted to run this by and get some of these out of the way. There's a lot more out there, guys, but I'll get this show on for you guys. I want you guys to have a wonderful week. I appreciate your patience sometimes in getting these out a little bit late. I've been trying to get a lot done here on the property, and I've been trying to help my son. He was building over here the kennel. We got to get some dogs. You know, when we're leaving all day here, I'm trying to get some security things going, some lights to come on here and there while we're absent. Um, and through the day, but we're going to make this property something special. And um, I have some, uh, I'd like to invite some of you, you know, here someday when I get the podcast cabin built. And that's going to be a really cool process. But before I get that started, I got to get some personal things like a dog kennel. I got to get a perimeter fence around my house with some security lights. I've got to get some more security lights up down here, down the road, um, just to kind of protect the property so I'm aware. I got to get some infinity beam lights up. Uh, out back here and I'm gonna go back here and see if I have any deer I've got some deer I've got a pole barn back here that I'm gonna show I'll show you here I'm gonna clip it off so I don't know if you can see that building back there let's go back here real quick 
I think I've got time. Let's walk back here. If you can't, my light's gonna come on. Yeah, there's my security light. Let's walk back here. See, there's where there is. And I mowed this patch here. Let's see what's back here. You can't see it here, but in front. No, there was some deer. Back here is my barn. Okay. It's too dark for you guys to see. Sorry about that. My light's gonna come back on here. I put the security light up. These, these lights are great. Um, it's motion activated. I got them around my house, and they're solar. Oh, I got the twilight bark going. All right, well, guys, um, I'm sorry about the delay in getting this show out here, but I'll go ahead and get this on tonight, and it may not come to you guys till tomorrow. But I appreciate you guys, and I hope this was a kind of a fun session for you. Um, kind of fills you in. I haven't been able to answer a lot of the people on our website uh, with some of the questions that they have, but I always want to keep you guys informed and in tune and being in the know. And as soon as I get some of these projects done, um, we'll start on that cabin. And I think that's going to be really, really cool. I'm really excited for that. So until next time, guys, have a great week for you, for you people out there that's getting ready to experience these storms. Stay safe. Uh, use your head, plan ahead of time, and help your neighbor. Okay, guys, uh, until next week, this is Lance with Crypto Brothers Investigations of Oklahoma. Take care.